Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Break down easy archetypes that teach play styles. First up, let's talk about it. Negation. So, as someone who's new to Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the easiest archetypes to learn negation from is the Sanctuary in the Sky along with Guiding Arad Aradian. Believe it! As you can see there. So why do I consider this a really easy archetype to learn negation from? You can see from that effect that when you do have it in your pendulum scale, it means that you don't pay for the cost of counter traps. First of all, counter traps such as the solemn cards where you pay 1500 or, you know, ultimate providence, such sort of counter traps that require payment means you don't have to pay anything at all as this is in your scale. Also with the sanctuary in the sky, they also have other effects that means that have positive effects when counter traps are activated. And when you combine all these together and with all other things involved, it means that counter traps and negation in general is promoted to you as a newcomer in an easy way for you to understand. And you can begin to see how negation can be quite devastating and can be quite overwhelming to an opponent. Obviously, it is done incrementally in an easy gameplay loop for you as a newcomer to understand. This is without adding hand traps and all those things. This is a very easy way for you as a newcomer in Yu-Gi-Oh! to understand negation, understand its power level, and understand how it affects Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole. So definitely, if you're new to negation in Yu-Gi-Oh!, I would recommend uh, getting the Pendulum Guiding Aradian and the Sanctuary in the Sky archetype just to learn the prospects of negation and that play style itself as it'll help you uh, feel familiar with the negation play style and just get you up to speed on how that works. Let's move on to the next play style. The next play style to consider is Boss Monster. A very easy play style that comes with this archetype known as Cleese. Upper Clifford Towers is the boss monster that is easy for a newcomer to pick up. Simply search this card with Clifford Scout, summon it, and bada bing, bada boom, you have a boss monster in a simplified game state, your opponent can't get rid of it. When nothing ruins the game plan. As long as they don't have any removal, like Regeki or things like that, or a Kaiju, any kind of spell or tribute removal or trap negation, then simply they can't get rid of it. And it's quite difficult to deal with. That's really convenient. And the boss monster playstyle is a very good playstyle to learn how boss monsters affect Yu-Gi-Oh! and why they're so relevant and why you should have layers to those boss monsters. Now, when Apo Clifford Towers originally came out, we do not have a lot of spell or trap card removal for monster cards in general. And Regeki was uh, limited at the time. It was only at one. So at that point in time, Kaijus did not exist. Loads of removal options for boss for strong monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh did not exist. Now it is a whole completely new environment in Yu-Gi-Oh where removal for strong monsters does exist if they don't negate anyway. But the point is, is that for anyone who is new to Yu-Gi-Oh, like yourself, you're watching this video and you just want to learn about some playstyles in Yu-Gi-Oh, then please are the best archetype to introduce you to the boss monster concept and to ease you in into how boss monsters affect you in Yu-Gi-Oh, how to apply them, how to use them, and how they will make your deck building or playstyle experience better. And you can also find out what kind of playstyle in Yu-Gi-Oh do you like to do the most often. Or mix and match with an negation playstyle with a boss monster playstyle. Whatever you want to do. In general, it just gives you a rough idea of the kind of playstyle that you're going for. Okay, let's move on. 
Here we are. The next play style to consider is anti-meta. What is anti-meta? As you can see in front of you, these are just specific monsters that have floodgate effects. Effects that essentially slow down Yu-Gi-Oh. For example, with Fossil Diner, Pass Passifello. If this card is flipped face up, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. Neither player can special summon monsters. Such sort of effects that essentially grind the game to a halt and make Yu-Gi-Oh! into a simplified game state. We just go back to just, we like to call Caveman Yu-Gi-Oh! where it's all just about attacking and bring the Yu-Gi-Oh! -Oh! back to simplified gameplay. You are absolutely right! Without all those pesky effects and all those pesky combo wombos and all those pesky things that you find complicated. Keep it short. Keep it simple. What anti-meta does is simplify Yu-Gi-Oh! to a simplified game state that is easy. And if you like that kind of play style, then anti-meta is the play style for you. Where we simplify Yu-Gi-Oh! to its simple points and it's all about just who's monster strongest, who's bigger and attack for the stronger monster indeed so definitely as a newcomer to you you consider this play style play it a bit and see if this is the sort of play style you want to do remember there's no right or wrong answer but playing these play styles that i mentioned in this video and then mixing and matching whether you want to have all uh three of them the navigation boss monster and anti-meta in your deck you want to have all of them can give you just a rough understanding of what you would like to do in Yu-Gi-Oh! and just give you a general sense of purpose. Okay, let's go over to the last kind of playstyle that I mentioned on this video. Here we have it, the last playstyle, what is known as Helmet. What does that mean? That means that this is a sort of playstyle that the archetype essentially has a simplified game plan written on their effects and they play in a linear and simplified way. This is where you trust the archetype's playstyle completely and you just follow the playstyle that is written on the cards or on the archetype itself. Does not sound too bad. Which is known as helmet gameplay, where the, where the playstyle of the archetype doesn't of you playing the archetype doesn't require much thought as it has one simple line and you just follow the line that you have been given or that has been provided to you by the cards and their effects. This is known as the helmet playstyle and maybe you are this kind of player and maybe this is the kind of playstyle you're like, or you just follow the archetype's whims, you don't really mix and match and are all about just following that play style, following what is given to you, eating the meal in front of you and not really um, eating anything else or having any side dishes, having any entrees or desserts, just eating the meal right in front of you. That is the best example I can put right now. So as a newcomer, these are the four play styles that we have in Yu-Gi-Oh! You can always mix and match, but this is in general what we have in Yu-Gi-Oh! And on why I mention artifacts, because I feel as a newcomer, artifacts are a very easy archetype, I feel, for this helmet playstyle, for an archetype that's easy to follow with its own uh, playstyle, and it really hammers home the playstyle of how it plays. That's all I've got to say at this moment. Conclusion? So... In Yu-Gi-Oh, there are several playstyles, but these are the four main playstyles that we see in Yu-Gi-Oh come up time and time and time again. I would say they're the four core playstyles, and everything else is built around these playstyles. Some you will mix and match, some you may do all of them in one deck. All these playstyles you may do them in one deck or in one archetype, but in general, this is the general playstyles. This is the general core playstyles in Yu-Gi-Oh! So it is important as a newcomer or someone who's new to Yu-Gi-Oh! is to play some of these archetypes 
play these play styles in their initial way as i've mentioned in this video and then find the play style that you sort of like or you like the aspects of those play styles and then use the aspects of play styles you like to build your own play style are you uh a player that likes to use negation a lot and anti-meta stuff a lot then you can combine the negation and anti-meta playstyles to form your new playstyle or do you like using boss monsters a lot and like using and like following the archetype a lot then you can use the helmet and boss monster playstyle to build your own playstyle it's all about having the core playstyles established and understanding them and then using some parts of playstyles that you like to build your own playstyle that's what Yu-Gi-Oh is about at the end of the day. It's about mix and matching what you want and doing what you want with the playstyles that have been provided to you. And I think that's all I've got to say for this video. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right? is in your hands.